The island of Barbados lies at the southern end of the Caribbean islands. Barbados is densely populated, only 14 miles wide and 21 miles long. But any feelings of congestion disappear when you head into the country in the wide green fields of sugarcane. Morgan Lewis Mill in St Andrew Parish is the only intact mill left on the island. The mills were built by the Dutch Jews who bought sugarcane from Brazil in 1637. We like to think about our history starting from around 1625 in Barbados when the uh, British came. Barbados, like, therefore, unlike all the other islands in the Caribbean, has always been colonized or was colonized by the English and have never changed hands. This was the age of discovery, the 17th century, inception of the Europeans looking to establish colonies, tropical colonies to uh, increase European wealth. So they started off in Barbados with the growing of tobacco, brought in uh, people from Europe, uh, mainly from Ireland, Scotland, in the days of Cromwell in the 1650s. These were known as indentured servants, and they worked on the tobacco fields. Well, that did not go on for very long, because the tobacco industry eventually collapsed due to the stiff competition from tobacco grown in, the, in North America. Tobacco, uh, therefore, gone. You look around for another cash crop, and the cash crop was sugar. And the introduction of sugar in the West Indies meant the introduction of African slaves. The white people cultivated the ground, but uh, they suffered a lot from disease and uh, yellow fever and malaria and things of this nature. And the heat affected them badly. And then somebody had the idea of bringing some Africans across from Africa, which after all was on the same latitude as Barbados. And that's really how slavery started. We've still got the names of all the slaves here on this plantation in 1822. And you can tell by their names what jobs they did. And they must have been very skilled people and had immense knowledge and they worked probably very hard from six in the morning till about four or five in the afternoon, um, bearing in mind that it wasn't a long day uh, in Barbados with the sun rising at about 5.30 in the morning and setting at 6.30 in the evening. Uh, they would work all day. The plantation needed quite a lot of buildings. Uh, it needed a boiling house and in the early days a windmill because they crushed the sugar cane in the windmill and the juice ran into the boiling house where they would boil it and evaporate the moisture off and eventually that would turn into a syrup. And we, we here on this plantation, right up until 1948, used to make syrup and send it all to Newfoundland, where it was consumed by people in the shipping or fishing and logging industries. The house was built uh, in about 1650, and it changed hands many times over the years. Uh, but my great-great-great-grandfather, Lawrence Cumberbatch, bought it in 1810, and his family came from St. Nicholas Parish in Bristol, the house now is very much a museum piece, isn't it? Well, I hope not too much of a museum piece, because I live in it. <laughs> I might be a bit of a museum piece uh, myself. I mean, sometimes they think I'm the only monk around here, because it's called St. Nicholas Abbey, and they say, where are the monks? And I say, well, it's me. When English settlers came to Bridgetown in 1628, they found an Indian bridge spanning the waterway, and called the town the Bridge. Today, there are two bridges which cross over the Constitution River. One of the bridges spans the Carinage, once the birthing place of ships from all over the Caribbean. Today, pleasure craft and fishing boats occupy the water. Echoing the island's English roots is Trafalgar Square, complete with a statue of Lord Horatio Nelson. Nelson came to Barbados in 1805 and died later that year at the Battle of Trafalgar. This statue actually predates the one in England by 17 years. Just across the street are the public buildings which accommodate the Houses of Parliament. Barbados has the third oldest Parliament system in the Commonwealth. East of the Parliament buildings is St. Michael's Cathedral. In its time, the arched roof was the widest in the world. And the cemetery is fascinating too, with tombstones dating back to 1660. 
While the Anglican Church can claim the largest congregation, there are over 100 religious groups. For every place of worship, spirits of another kind are gathered in the rum shops. Despite the name, all sorts of liquors are sold, including the island's award-winning beer. For more information, visit our website on topoftheworld.net.